The Lachman test is a test for ACL integrity. The patient's knee should be in about 30 degrees of flexion by using a towel, bolster, or the therapist's knee as shown here. One of the therapist's hands is used to stabilize the distal femur, and the other hand is used to perform an anterior force to the proximal tibia. The therapist should be looking for how much anterior translation occurs. A positive test is noticeable laxity compared to the contralateral side. Grade 1 plus is 5 millimeters of motion, grade 2 plus is 10 millimeters of motion, and grade 3 plus is more than 15 millimeters of motion. The infill should also be noted. A firm infill would be normal and a soft infill would be abnormal. A positive test might indicate an ACL pathology. This is the valgus stress test which tests for MCL integrity. The first time you perform this test, the patient's knee will be in full extension. Place one hand under the knee joint and try to drive the knee medially while your other hand is at the ankle driving it laterally. When performing this test, note the pain, grade how much motion is available, and note whether the infill is soft, firm, or empty. This is the close pack position for the tibia, so there shouldn't be any motion if the MCL is intact. The test then needs to be repeated in 30 degrees of flexion. Use the hand that was at the ankle to palpate the medial joint line of the knee while supporting the lower leg under your arm and provide the same medial force at the knee while moving the ankle laterally. A positive test is reproduction of pain and or increased laxity compared to the contralateral side. Grade 1 is 5 to 10 millimeters of motion, grade 2 is 10 to 15 millimeters of motion, and grade 3 is 15 to 20 millimeters of motion. The Thessaly test is one of three tests for meniscal integrity. For this test, the patient stands on one leg and the therapist places their hands on the patient's iliac crest. The patient can hold onto the therapist's shoulders for balance. You perform this test by rotating the patient's hips as far as possible in both directions three times. A positive test would be reproduction of the patient's symptoms, clicking, locking, or catching in the knee. The test should first be performed with the patient's knee in about five degrees of flexion. If the test is negative, the test should be repeated with the patient's knee in about 20 degrees of flexion. The joint line tenderness test is the second test in a cluster of three tests to assess meniscal integrity. The test is to consider positive if the patient's tenderness is reproduced with palpation along the medial or lateral joint line. A positive test may indicate a meniscal tear. The McMurray test is the third in a cluster of the three tests for meniscal integrity. During this test, the therapist fully flexes the knee and hip externally rotates the tibia, and then extends the knee while maintaining the external rotation. The therapist then repeats the flexion of the hip and knee, internally rotates the tibia, and extends the knee while maintaining the internal rotation. A positive test is a clicking or popping in the knee during extension or a reproduction of the patient's symptoms. Some red flags to look out for include significant swelling around the knee, throbbing pain with point tenderness, and the patient being unable to bear weight through their lower extremity. These symptoms, along with the traumatic mechanism of injury, could indicate possible fracture, and the patient would need to be sent for imaging.